Hi, I'm Harsh Agrawal, a PhD student at Georgia Tech. In this tutorial, we will look at how to set up interactive tasks in Habitat Lab and train an RL agent to solve such tasks. We will use furniture rearrangement as a working example for this tutorial. Imagine hosting a birthday celebration in your house. The guests come over, you celebrate your birthday with them and have a good time. However, the house is now a bit of a mess and you're too tired to clean up the house. Wouldn't it be amazing if you could ask a personal robot to help by saying, hey Siri, can you please help tidy up the house? And just as you instructed, the robot pulls all the furniture in its original position and cleans up the living room. Let's try to build such a personal robot. For the simplicity of this tutorial, we will use a simpler version of the rearrangement task in which the agent has to pick up a single chair and then place it at its desired position. We will be using Collab to go over the tutorial in the previous tutorial on interactivity in Habitat Simulator, we looked at how to add and interact with objects using the Habitat Simulator Python API. We will use those methods to spawn the agent and objects at some predefined initial configuration. Let's hop over to the Colab notebook. We will not go over every detail and implementation, but feel free to pause this tutorial and go over these step by step by cloning the Colab notebook. We have already installed Habitat Sim, Habitat Lab, and other necessary packages in the Colab runtime. We will download a new theme called Coda that we'll use for this tutorial. We have also imported the necessary packages and written a few visualization utilities that we'll use for the rest of this tutorial. This function renders a video from a list of observations at the given FPS. The simulate function runs the simulator for a given amount of time at 60 Hertz. Finally, the display sample function displays a single visual observation from the simulator. Now let's set up the simulator by using the following config. We will keep the resolution of the visual sensor 256 cross 256. Let's also enable both RGB and depth sensors. For interactive tasks, we want to ensure enable physics option is true. Here we have defined a small function init agent to spawn an agent at a fixed location. Agent pause is the 3D coordinate of the agent in the scene. We also define the initial orientation of the agent. Using this function, we will initialize the sim, spawn the agent at the specified position, and render a video. Now that we have set up the simulator, let's look at how to create a dataset to train an RL agent on. As mentioned in the previous tutorial on the navigation task, a dataset class contains a collection of episodes. Each episode, which is a single instantiation of the task, will contain agent and object specifications. The dataset class will then define several utility functions to read the dataset and load the episode in the simulator. Since we want to train an agent on a single episode, we will keep things simple. We will put a chair in front of the agent and the agent will be tasked with picking the chair, going forward for a few meters, and then placing the chair at its desired position. Here we define a function set object in front of agent, which adds an object defined by variable object ID in front of the agent at some distance defined by variable Z offset. Since the agent is looking in the negative Z direction, to put an object in front, we just need to define the offset in that direction. We also need to make sure that the object is placed on top of the surface and not intersect with it. We do this by raising the bounding box of the object until the bottom corners of the bounding box lie just over the surface mesh. For our single episode, we will use this function to put a chair at its initial position, which is 3 meters in front of the agent. The final position of the chair is 7 meters in front of the agent. Let's render the chair at its initial and final position in this video. Now that we have created an episode, let's define a formal episode definition. This is what a single episode definition will look like. First, we want to store which scene the episode belongs to. Next, we want to store the initial position and the orientation the agent will be spawned in at the beginning of the episode. Then we want to define the initial spawn location and orientation of the object, as well as the type of object. Finally, we want to specify the desired goal location of the object, 
the goal location will also be described by the position and rotation of the object. We will use the JSON format and write utility functions to serialize the episode into a file. This function initializes the episode dictionary with the scene ID and the agent's spawn location. This function will store the type as well as initial position and orientation of the object. This function will add goal information to the dictionary. The function build episode queries all the relevant information from the simulator and creates the episode dictionary. Let's run this cell to store the data set into a JSON file. We will now define several episode and data set related classes to read the episode information from the JSON file. The class rearrangement spec will be used to store the object's initial and final configuration, that is its position and rotation. We then extend and define another class rearrangement object spec to also include information about object's type that will be used to add the object into the scene at the start of the episode. Next, we extend the navigation episode clause to include two variable objects of type rearrangement object spec and goals of type rearrangement spec. Navigation episode already defines the necessary attributes for identifying the scene and agent's initial configuration. Finally, we extend the point now dataset class to create rearrangement dataset class. One of the functions we need to override is from JSON function in which we have to specify how to read the JSON file and initialize the rearrangement episode. Let's quickly test that we can successfully load the JSON file we saved earlier using our dataset class. We can see that all the checks passed successfully and so we are able to load the dataset properly. Now that we have defined an episode, let's add the most critical piece required to set up this task. We need to define a new action that dictates how will the agent pick up an object. We will implement a grab release action via a magic pointer. The agent can point to an object in its view and if the object is within a certain distance threshold, then the agent can pick the object. For example, in this figure, the blue crosshair denotes the magic pointer that the agent uses to choose which object it wants to pick. In this case, it's pointing to the purple cylinder. This action works in two steps. First, it projects the crosshair position in the 2D coordinate frame of the agent's camera view to a point on the near plane of the viewing frustum in the 3D coordinate frame. Next, a ray is cast from the agent's camera to the crosshair global position and is further extended to see if it intersects with any object. Amongst all the objects that the ray intersects, the agent will try to pick the object which is closest as long as it is within a certain distance threshold. Let's hop over to the collab and implement this action. In this cell, we will implement a raycast function that will cast a ray in the direction of the crosshair and check if it collides with an object within a certain distance threshold. Because the sensors might have different camera parameters, we provide the functionality to choose which sensor the agent wants to use for recasting. Using the camera for that visual sensor, we will get an object defining the ray from the camera to the crosshair position in the near plane of the viewing frustum. After which, we will call the cast ray function of the simulator that will return all objects the ray intersects with as long as they are within the certain distance threshold defined by max distance. Out of all those objects, we will return the object which is closest. Let's test this functionality for various scenarios. The first scenario is when there is an object under the crosshair at 128,190 in a 256 cross 256 resolution viewport. Next, we will reduce the distance threshold from 2 meters to 1 meters. In the third scenario, we will change the crosshair position to be the center of the screen. We can see that in the first scenario, the agent can pick up the chair. If we reduce the threshold to 1 meter, the function will return minus 1 indicating that no object is grippable. If we change the crosshair to be the center of the screen, then again the function will return that there are no grippable objects. This cell registers the recast function as an action by defining an action spec and the corresponding actuation spec 
which contains the action specifications like crosshead position, distance threshold, etc. We extend the navigation action space consisting of forward, turn left, turn right, stop to include this new grab release action. Now we will extend the simulator class to implement a few task specific modifications to the step function of the simulator. Here we will extend the habitat sim class for the rearrangement task. We first define a new initialize objects function which will load the object in its initial configuration as defined by the episode. Then we define a grip object ID property that stores whether the agent is holding any object or not. Since we added a new action for this task, we have to modify the step function to define what happens when grab release action is called. If a simple navigation action like move forward, turn left, turn right is called, we pass it forward to act function of the agent, which already defines the behavior of these actions. For the grab release action, if the agent is not already holding an object, we first call the recast function using the values from the actuation spec to see if any object is grippable. If it returns a valid object ID, we put the object in an invisible inventory and remove it from the scene. If the agent was already holding an object, grab release action will try release the object at the same relative position as it was grabbed. The last remaining thing is to implement task specific sensors and measurements. In this cell, we will define new sensors and metrics for the rearrangement task. Sensors define various part of the simulator state that's visible to the agent or the agent's policy. Object's current position will be made available by the object position sensor. The get observation function computes the relative location of the object with respect to the agent. Similarly, the goal position related to the agent will be available through the object goal sensor. Next, we look at measurements. These define various metrics about the task, which can be used to measure task progress and define rewards. Note that the measurements are privileged information not accessible to the agent as part of the observation space. Object to goal distance measures the Euclidean distance between the object and the goal. Similarly, agent to object distance measures the Euclidean distance between the agent and the object. We also need to make sure that these sensors and measurements are visible to the config system. Now that all components are in place, let's ensure everything is working fine by hard coding an agent. In the cell, we add the sensors and the measurements we defined earlier to the config system, specify the path to our dataset, and initialize the habitat environment. Here, I have hard-coded the sequence of actions. Let's take a look at what this sequence of actions look like. As you can see, the agent gets closer to the object, picks it up, goes forward a few steps, and drops the chair at its final position. We can now use measurements we have defined to design a reward for our agent. Here I extend the nav class to change the reward structure for the rearrangement task. When the agent successfully grabs an object for the first time within an episode, it gets a positive reward. It also gets penalized if grab release action has no consequence. The agent also gets rewarded for getting closer to the object. After the object is picked up, it's encouraged by a positive reward to take the object closer to the goal position. It also gets a high success reward when the episode finishes successfully. As a proof of concept, we will train an RL agent to overfit to a single episode. Here I'm using a simple auto regressive policy that takes the object's current position and the goal position as input and predicts a distribution over actions. We will train this with PPO. For the purpose of this tutorial, I have already trained a policy using 400 update steps. Here is how the agent performs in the episode. It loads to successfully call the grab action, goes forward a few steps, and drops the chair at the right spot. On TensorBoard, we can also see how the agent gets better as the training progresses. This marks the end of the tutorial. I hope through this tutorial you were able to get a sense of how to set up interactive tasks in Habitat Lab. This Colab notebook is publicly available and we encourage you to use it as a blueprint for your own interactive tasks. Thank you.